So I want you to think back to being a kid. Think about watching TV and feeling really excited. Your parents have allowed you to have dinner in front of the television with your plate in your lap. Your mom has accepted the mess that you and your siblings will inevitably leave behind on the sofa. Pretty unexpected. But there is an explanation. It's July of 1976. It's July of 1976, and the kid is me. My mom has thrown caution to the wind, because tonight on the evening news, we will see pictures from the surface of the image of, of the planet Mars, taken by NASA's Viking lander. So we get this image on TV. We see lots of red rocks and a blue sky. But wait a second, is the sky on Mars supposed to look blue? Today, it's common knowledge that the Martian sky is pink. Back in 1976, engineers and scientists figured this out pretty quickly. They recalibrated their data and generated updated images. A few nights later, we saw this. For me, seeing the blue sky and then seeing the red sky was a life-changing moment. I realized that adults don't instantly know everything, that they themselves have to figure this out. And what this meant was there was an entire universe of questions out there that needed to be answered. So between 1976 and today, just a few years, I have had the privilege of working for NASA and in my own space tech startups on technology that not only flies to Mars and orbits Jupiter, but also on satellites that orbit the Earth. I have had the privilege to be one of the first in all of humanity to look into the deep cosmos using the Hubble Space Telescope. The best part of all of this is everything that we've had to create to get us up there has made life better down here on planet Earth. So life on planet Earth. Some people will tell you that we are living in a very difficult time. They will tell you that we are dealing with climate change, we are dealing with hunger, we have conflict based on religious, racial, political difference. They point out that we are destroying our own environment in the name of industry and development. So then what is the solution? People like Elon Musk believe that we will become a multi-planetary species as we move off planet to escape this one as it becomes uninhabitable. I think he's partly right. If you think about where space tech is today, where it will be next year or in the year 2030, you are likely to believe in the incredible adventure that awaits humanity on the red planet. Having worked on spacecraft for nearly my entire adult life, I agree that we will get to Mars. But having to escape this planet because it be becomes uh, uninhabitable does not need to happen. It is this belief that gets me up every morning. It is this belief that gets me to work across 15, 18 time zones to bring together people on a global platform, to innovate, to think outside the box, and ensure a future not just for our children, but for children of future generations. If I take you and ask you about your expertise, you've got inspiration, you've got expertise, you're doing a lot to help humanity. What if I tell you that what you're working on is required by an astronaut, and that it has to go up on a rocket in 18 months? The level of inspiration that you will feel will be incredible. Speaking from personal experience, I'll tell you, you can't wait to get to work in the morning if you have this kind of opportunity. All the innovations and lifestyle ch changes that will come because we are developing space technology will be incredible. We're at an incredible crossroads right now. We've got access to space, and we've had some enormous breakthroughs in technology in the last few years. Think about your phone. A lot of you guys have them out right now. The computer 
in your phone in 1976 would have taken up this entire room. Satellites were the size of buses back then. Today, you can send a satellite like this into space. This flies by itself, costs about a quarter million dollars. Think about how much a car costs in this country. Yeah, right? This has got a camera on it, and you can send it up for the price of a fancy car. This was built here in Singapore by a Singaporean, our chief technology officer, for courses that we offer in satellite technology. If you think about the computational abilities of computers today, if you think about the incredible ability we have to send information across the planet, deliver services and products in instantaneously, think about 3D printing, telemedicine, all of these growing areas serve as the basis for what I call astropreneurship, space entrepreneurship. So how are you affected by space tech today? How will you be affected in the near future? And how will you be affected in the year 2030? Let's think about this. This is a photograph of a hurricane taken in mid-2017 by a weather satellite. This is Hurricane Irma, one of the most catastrophic storms in recorded human history. The winds of this hurricane were so powerful that any building, any tree, any living thing in its path could have been completely destroyed. We live in a world of climate change where storms of this magnitude unfortunately may occur on a regular basis. When scientists and engineers first launched weather satellites into space, they could not have imagined a storm of this size. But here we are. Satellites have gone down significantly in cost in the past few years. What does this mean? Smaller countries with fewer resources no longer have to rely on larger countries for data handouts. They can build their own satellites. They can launch these satellites and take data as frequently as they want in the area of the world they want to look at, enabling people to evacuate themselves in a timely fashion. The information on Hur Hurricane Irma was de um, disseminated by TV reporters, social service providers, by rescue workers. Families were able to save themselves and evacuate to safety because they had data from space. Imagine if we had not had this kind of information. So this is a telescope called the Herschel Space Observatory built by the European Space Agency. It's another spacecraft I worked on. The gold shiny material there, that's a space blanket. It's an incredibly efficient material, very good for thermal management. It's lightweight, fantastic, it's tough. Here's a, a refugee protecting her child with the same blanket. What an incredible use of outer space and human space. If you think about space as a place that we get te technology that we bring down, you can also think about space as an environment we can exploit because it is very unique. Astronauts and the elderly, it turns out, suffer from a common ailment, bone loss or osteoporosis. Can we address both populations using the same medical treatment? When astronauts are in space, their skeletons don't have to bear their weight. As a result, their bones weaken, they lose bone mass. The elderly lose bone mass because their bodies just can't produce new bone material. Researchers have taken medication that's designed to prevent bone loss and injected it into mice on board the International Space Station. What this has allowed is for them to minimize the duration of clinical trials as compared to what would be required on the Earth. We don't fully understand why people's bodies behave differently in space. There's a lot to be studied, and I think this is an area that has incredible implications in the future. 
To further study this issue, our company sent up an experiment to the International Space Station this year. We looked at genetically programmed bacteria. We're scheduled to send up a, phys a physical system and a material science system next year in 2018. So let's think about 2018. There will be a few fundamental current activities that will change your relationship, your sense of the tangibility of space next year. A number of private companies plan to send astronauts up to the space station. This will be the first time that private companies rather than governments are doing this. There are a number of companies who are looking at space tourism. So what happens when a middle-aged couple decides to spend their wedding anniversary in a space capsule floating above the Earth? I've told my husband we're doing this. <laughs> we haven't told our daughters yet, but I guess they'll find out now. So doctors will need to understand what happens to the average human body in space. Psychologists will need to understand the effects of both long and short-term space travel. We will have to develop tools to allow our minds to cope with an incredibly wonderful but different environment. Next year, there's an incredible contest worth $30 million. The first team that sends images back from the moon live for the general public will win $30 million thanks to Google. There are four countries right now with rocket reservations for a lunar rover to send a rover up there to send us images back. So what does this mean for you? You'll get live video from the moon on your phone. When you go outside, you'll never look at the sky the same way again. You'll look up at the moon and you'll say, I wonder what the rovers are up to right now. Let me just get out my phone and check. I photoshopped that myself. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We're moving into a realm where not only large nations with a tradition of space exploration are in the field, but we also see smaller nations that have nascent space ecosystems coming into space exploration. By the year 2030, most countries in the world will see their citizens traveling to space. The number of innovations we're going to require to get up there cannot be provided just by a small group of countries or a small group of private companies. We as astropreneurs have to come together on a global scale to provide all the systems, the subsystems, the services in all disciplines to get us up there. So, if you're currently working in education, if you work in technology, let's just say you're doing something significant to express the human soul in the arts. We need you, we need your help. We need to figure out as we democratize space how to humanize space. I'm sure that all of us will play a role in the future. Who would have thought 20 years ago that we would be able to find a blanket thinner than a piece of paper that could keep billions of people warm. Thank you.